Hey everyone, this is Coach Rory, and I'm gonna be presenting to you today 10 things I can't live without. It's a little remix, or basically copying what GQ did with their top 10 list with celebrities, so I hope you enjoy. You know, I'm feeling kind of thirsty, I'm gonna pour myself a drink, so I am currently drinking soy milk. Now, the reason I picked this item is it's a pretty big deal. When I uh, was in high school, my go-to recovery drink was chocolate milk. I would guzzle chocolate milk pretty much by the gallon, especially following runs. I'd have it at lunch, you know, and go to cross country practice later in the day. And even into college and, and beyond, I drank chocolate milk. And what I actually found is, and learned through reading, is that to some degree, everyone's a little bit lactose intolerant. Honestly, I just figured it out in the past year by cutting most dairy. The only exception would be cheese because I really like pizza. I'm, I've had a lot less GI issues and actually less acid reflux, which was really hurting me um, at the marathon distance. So that was a big revelation. Cheers to some soy milk. Mm, love it. And it's actually really hard to get a hold of chocolate soy milk for some reason. The reason I choose this one too over other alternatives I do like it that it has a little bit more protein. So I'm gonna set the carton aside, but keep my drink out here throughout. This is another product that has uh, improved my racing. This would be Squirrel's Nut Butter. Uh, it's kind of a funny name, but basically it is an anti-chafing product that just works really well. It has super simple ingredients. The first one's coconut oil, but the way it's crafted and put together just works super well for me. You can put it on any body part, um, hence the name. I also like that it's made here in town where I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. So great product, uh, highly recommend it. Next up, I got a pair of headphones here. These are Aftershocks and I'm not necessarily promoting the brand. I have tried other uh, brands of bone conducting headphones that I liked, but this pair I've just had the longest. These are great, so if you don't know how bone conducting headphones work, they play through the uh, they play music through the bones uh, outside your ear or in your skull basically and the sound quality is still surprisingly good and what it's actually going to allow you to do too is hear surrounding noises so you can hear approaching vehicles maybe an angry dog that's coming towards you love these I even use them at home when I'm doing core just you know cleaning up around the house doing chores so gotta have them alright right here I have a stack of training logs this might be a strange sight in 2020, but I still get a lot of satisfaction out of recording my runs um, manually by writing them out. These training logs actually go back to 2012, and if I go to my childhood home, I think I have them going all the way back to probably 2002, which would be my first year of cross country. Basically over the years, I've kind of added more information. You can see this one from 2012. I just mentioned distance, time, running conditions, how I felt, of course make special notes for races and splits and stuff so i still track my runs on strava and i also have a google document with my personal coach but i've always had a physical copy so i can kind of compare over the years and notice trends in my training and again it's just really satisfying at the end of the day to write down what you did and just see it written in ink so as you may know uh, i'm pretty into video i do most of the video content for runners connect I also have a personal channel. I'll make a little plug for Trail Gangstas. I do some kind of fun parody and uh, humor related skits on my own personal channel. And the way I film a lot of these is actually with the DJI Osmo handle. They're most well known for making drones and other camera equipment, but the, the item I've actually liked the most by them is just the handle. I think this retails for about $150 which for a gimbal isn't that bad. Now the, the catch here is it doesn't include the camera. You need to provide the camera via your cell phone. But I really like this as you can see it as I'm moving it around. Uh, it's very stable and it's gonna just allow me to record really smooth shots as a lot of the video footage I include would be French running or I'll film at races. It's a great product there. All right, I'm gonna bring some running shoes into the mix here. What I have uh, in my hands would be the Nike Pegasus 36, the trail edition. You know, I'm not necessarily loyal to a certain brand. I still wear 
Brooks, Saucony, Under Armour, but just currently I'm really liking what Nike has done in recent years with their Pegasus. I love their road shoe, the road version of the Pegasus, sorry. And then what I decided to do, since I also do trail running, um, I'd say about 50% of my running is trail running as well. I decided to try the trail Pegasus and I just loved it. If you like the Pegasus on the roads, it feels almost identical in that it's pretty light. It's very responsive. You're still gonna have the hard bottom with really good grip because it's a trail shoe, but it's just such a great shoe. Uh, I'm gonna order a few more pairs of these. I think there's a newer one out, but to me, I think the 35 and up are gonna feel pretty much the same. Speaking of trail running, what I have here would be Catula Micro Spikes. Now there are a lot of versions of Micro Spikes out there. I feel like the most popular is Yak Tracks. So I, I wore those growing up in the Midwest and North Dakota, but since moving to Flagstaff, um, I got to know of this product because so many runners in town here wear them. Uh, again, I'm kind of plugging the, the local companies because I think that's really important, especially now with um, how the economy is kind of struggling with the pandemic. But anyway, Catula makes these excellent spikes. Basically, they're very aggressive micro spikes. They're very well designed for mountain running. They have a, a big uphill race that they do in the winter. So of course they're gonna respond well on ice. I've also worn them in the Grand Canyon with ice and snowy conditions. Great product. They're not really too heavy. You can see the uh, rubber is very light. And even though you have these aggressive metal spikes, uh, yeah, I don't really feel weighed down and they're one of my favorite additions uh, if you have slick terrain or icy terrain. Some people at the end of the night, you know, they cuddle up with a, a loved one or their pet. I'm gonna turn to my leg pillow. All right, I really like this specific pillow, but really anything will do. I think I started sleeping with a pillow in between my legs maybe 10 years ago because um, I've had some lower back pain due to mild scoliosis. I like this particular one because it's nicely curved, but if I'm at, say, a hotel, you know, traveling for a race, I won't necessarily pack this with me, but I'll just grab one of the extra pillows, put that in between my knees, and basically what it's gonna do is relieve some of the pressure on your lower back. It's gonna promote better alignment of the hips, and then also what I've noticed is when I don't have it, it feels like my knees are just knocking together like bone on bone. So I've just gotten so used to it, I have to have something in between my legs when I sleep. And if I don't, my back and hips will be just a little bit more sore than they would be otherwise. And then the brand, I'll just say it, this is a contour brand pillow. But again, there's, there's many versions out there. It doesn't have to be a particular one. This is my trusty pull-up bar. You can see based on the handles, it's pretty well used. Not only do I use this for pull-ups, but I can also flip it on the ground and do kind of elevated push-ups with varying grips. And then also, if I flip backwards, I can do dips on them when I set this on the ground. So I really like this because I think a lot of distance and endurance runners kind of slack on the upper body. I'm not a huge fan of lifting. I don't like to set aside time to do a specific upper body workout since I'm primarily working from home, especially now. Pretty much every time I go by it, if I walk by the doorway, I'll do pull-ups, I'll flip it, put it on the ground. Like I said, I'll do push-ups and I'll kind of rotate each day, you know? I'll just make a mental note. Okay, Monday, I'm doing pull-ups and I'll try to do say 50 throughout the day. Tuesday, I might think, okay, it's push-ups. I'm gonna try to do 200 push-ups today. So I might do 25 at a time, come back to it, you know, it could even be an hour later. And even though I'm not doing it consecutively in a set workout, there are still some gains to be made from doing those short isolated stretches of upper body work. That's a great one. I think I'm on to my 10th and final item. So here we go. My final item, which I use a lot, a lot, would be a Patagonia hydration vest. Now, I'll have to look up the specs and give you the exact model if you want. Um, but this one, personally, I've just found to be my favorite. It's held up really well. I think I've had this for about three years. You can see it's pretty well worn. I won it as a prize at a trail race. It's great. I've actually had, I haven't had a car for two years. So I commute everywhere by either running or biking. And uh, I am a substitute teacher or I was when school was in session. So a lot of times what I do is I pack up my outfit for teaching 
I obviously wear my running clothes and just have this on my back. Can pretty much carry whatever I need. I did actually take the hydration bladder out. You can put that back in, of course. Let's say I'm gonna go to the canyon and wanna have a lot of water. But I just like the various pockets. It has a zip up pocket for gels. You can do bottles in the front. And I know there's some other great brands out there, but this one is just one of my favorites. So those would be my 10 items that I cannot live without in terms of being a runner. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't done so, make sure you check out uh, Coach Dylan's version of the video so you can compare. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and have downloaded our podcast because we want to get you on both platforms. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great run today.